Hi there! If you like powerful distributed systems and capable tools, focus on because we are going to bring them together. That's the intro to Kate Sandra video, which shows us how we do we run Cassandra, Apache Cassandra on Kubernetes with a native project, open source project called Kate Sandra. So I'm going to show you the first few steps how easy it to install and start using um, Apache Cassandra on Kubernetes with Kate Sandra. So that's my Linux box. I'm to make it a little bit bigger for you. And we are going to execute some commands to install the things. First one we are going to need is Helm. Helm is like a package manager for Kubernetes. If you know it already, you know how convenient it is to use Helm charts to install uh, even very complex applications. We are going to install this way, Kate Sandra. And first thing we are doing is just to add repository for Kate Sandra to install things. And second thing I'm going to use is traffic. You know, uh, we use uh, Kubernetes ingresses to accept incoming connections and route them to the proper services. Traffic is the ingress like that. We could have been using uh, Nginx, for example, but we prefer traffic. For this use case, you will see soon why. Okay, so with that done, that's enough, enough for us to update the repositories. And I see what we successfully got an update from traffic chart repository and from Kate Sandra chart repository. Uh, if you are not familiar with Helm, it may be not just completely clear to you what we are doing right now, but that's very easy. We can say it's like apt get update. Very similar to that. Now I'm going to install Ingress for our project. So you will see everything what's going on inside and I'm doing Helm install command. Uh, the installation will be called traffic from traffic helm chart and I will use traffic YAML configuration file. We will take a look at it in a second. So initialization of the installation takes like a second or about that. See what uh, traffic deployment was done and that's the first re revision and while it's being started so we can take a look at kubectl get pods for example, watch. Okay, so my port uh, for traffic is being started. It will take a moment. As long as we wait for it, we can take a look at the traffic YAML file. And it's very, very, very simple file here. So we basically just explain to traffic what and how uh, has to be expo exposed. So we are opening some um, yeah incoming points and that will be a type node port of course so you don't use node port on your production but that's a demonstration so don't judge me very well so i guess we have uh, traffic already running yes we do and at this point we can open traffic uh, dashboard traffic comes with a very nice uh, dashboard which describes everything what we have uh, in this setting. So we have uh, two routers of a HTTP type, uh, four services, and basically that's it. I will not make a deep dive, dive into that. That's not about traffic, but in general, that's what you get in the traffic dashboard, which helps you to understand what are the routers and services, what incoming calls are being distributed to your services. Currently, there is nearly nothing, just internal uh, traffic things. Let us go on. We still have a lot of uh, things to do. Okay, so we have ingresses prepared. Now we need something about Kate Sandra. Idea is very, very simple. With Helm, I am install Kate Sandra exactly like I do. I just did with uh, traffic. With Helm install command, it's going to be Helm install name Kate Sandra, Kate Sandra, Kate Sandra repository and configuration file Kate Sandra. You guess we are going to uh, check this file in a moment, but first let's take a look what's going on internally. So I'm going again to watch kubectl get pods to see how the system uh, develops over time. And you see like there is a lot of work going on. So 
there are some very interesting things and there are a lot of uh, pods starting. First traffic, you know already, we've seen it before, it's a traffic ingress. Uh, now we have here, Kate Sandra default uh, stateful set uh, zero, so that's the main Cassandra instance running. It has zero pods ready, it's going to have two, one for Cassandra and one for management API sidecar. Then what we having? Caspirator here is the one who is going to manage all the Cassandra operations like scaling, uh, changing the settings, and we have to do a rolling update, for example. So Caspirator is your own um, engineer, a virtual engineer, which executes all the operations with uh, Cassandra. With no need for you to take care of that, which is great. I love this guy. When we have Stargate, which is a secret source, we will say a little bit later about what about that. Grafana, Prometheus, those are pretty familiar. We use them to monitor. As you see, we use a lot of the tools, uh, not just to have uh, only Cassandra running, you know, that's not enough. Uh, we know what that's actually pretty a lot of work to have Cassandra running, uh, but we need to have proper monitoring over that. So we have Prometheus and Grafana install it, they are included into the Kate Sandra. Of course, you can use your own. So batteries are included, but swappable. If you don't like our Prometheus and Grafana, if you have something already, you are completely good to go with them. But I want to show you how it works all together seamlessly in a single setup. When we have Reaper, if you have never met Reaper before, it's responsible for uh, repair operations. Uh, and it's a great tool, uh, heavily developed by uh, the Last Pickle team, and originally, I believe, was developed by Spotify team. So, Reaper is a uh, Reaper operator is running but waiting before because we need to have Cassandra fully operational before, and now we will happen some more changes. So, Reaper operator. Uh, seeing what we have Cassandra running, we'll execute some bootstrapping for Reaper, so it will be ready to execute repairs. Uh, while we're waiting for that, let's take a look about uh, other things we are executing. First of all, I bet you are curious about the Kate Sandra YAML file I have applied. It's, well, not so big, not so small file, so we can take a look at some basics of that. Let me open it again. Okay, looks better. So, there are uh, definitions and settings we want to use for our Kate Sandra deployment. And first, and of course, first is Cassandra. And you see what we are using version 3.11.10, storage class standard, some settings for Java, some settings for resources, and some settings for data centers. Basically, those settings all go to CAS operator, uh, explaining what do we want to have uh, from the Cassandra point of view. But we also have some more settings. So we have Stargate here, which I will explain later. We have a Reaper definitions here, so we will have Reaper running. Notice so it's enabled true, of course. Uh, Cube Prometheus stack, so we have Grafana, and cube install it also as well. Of course, you can disable disable that. So meanwhile, we can take a look at our oops, we can take a look at our pods, and you see what uh, Reaper Shema and Reaper um, Reaper Shema has been completed, and now Reaper is running. It means what bootstrapping for repair operations is done already. And basically, what I did for that, I say it in my configuration file. Reaper is enabled, and now it's fully operational and ready to execute repairs for me, which is great. Like, I'm a lazy developer. That's incredible to have uh, the things automated for me. Perfect. So, let's take a look at the things going on in traffic. And you see, like, there is a lot of things changed already. We have now 10 routers, not 2, and 10 services, not 4. Let's take a look what's inside here. We see what we have now, much more routes regarding Prometheus, for example, some Stargate routes, Grafana, and others, and Reaper, of course. And we also know we have a lot of services opened for us, so we can start using them. That some of Stargate, Grafana, 
Prometheus and Reaper. What's included by default? So, uh, what comes next? Monitoring. We see what Grafana and Prometheus are running already, so let's take a look. My uh, first hero here is Prometheus. We use Prometheus for to collect metrics from uh, Apache Cassandra with Metrics Collector for Apache Cassandra, an open source project. And basically, we can uh, work with the things here we want to mm, see, like, I don't know, uh, collect D metrics collector Apache Cassandra histogram for P95 and I execute and we have some results already or we can switch to graph but you know what if you need graphs already well mostly probably Prometheus is not the best tool we have something much better so in the next step here I have Grafana Grafana is installed with uh, together with Kate Sandra it's an essential part for us and I'm going to admin, to login. Nope. I will not change password. And we can have some uh, dashboards here. We already have some already. So this one is uh, Cassandra cluster condensed. By default, we have only limited amount of nodes and uh, not so much information in the condensed dashboard. So we have some information on the cluster status. But what I really like is much uh, more information from my point of view is the Cassandra general over overview status. And that gives a lot of information. here. So basically, when we start to scroll, we see the amount of request for outputs, which is since well, the cluster is just started, so we don't have too much. Uh, and we see read latencies, we see what node status is up. Node count one node by default. Yes, I can scale it up, of course. Uh, cluster data size, which is pretty minor so far, 223 kilobytes. Usually Cassandra works with much bigger numbers and as a stable counts and so on and so forth. So basically everything what you need to know about your cluster is already prepared and already inserted here. We can see all the details uh, of the cluster we want to have here. And uh, finally, as we discussed it, that's not only about uh, monitoring and deployment. We also have a repair management tool installed called Reaper. And it's included in this one. So uh, we can see how it's able to work with the cluster already. Again, there is nothing to set up from the beginning. I see my uh, Kate Sandra cluster, the default cluster I've created. There are no running repair runs. And I can go to schedule and I can schedule a new one with cluster Kate Sandra. Well, I have only one cluster on this node. With a key space, uh, well, let's say I will choose system for this one. I'm going to be uh, owner for this repair start time. Okay, whatever. And I want it to happen weekly. So I will add this schedule. I see this um, repair schedule it. And I can open it in repairs. As it was just schedule it. Oh, okay, of course. I can get back to the schedules. Push the button right now. I have to adjust the time of the start. And there is my new repair. So maybe I... Okay, now my repair has been scheduled. Sorry, bad finger at that. And now in repair, I see finally my running repair which just started and I see what it affects Keyspace system with 17 tables and I can see the segments how it's being uh, processed step by step so first repair is done already and others are scheduled and will be executed soon and basically I have a Cassandra cluster running with monitoring tools and repair tools and later on with the backup tools in just few clicks. That's how Kate Sandra works. That's completely open source tool we suggest you to take a look at, participate, try to run at your own. 
That's the way we think how Cassandra should be running on uh, Kubernetes. And this project is going to be great. That's completely open source project. And we ask you to join the community, try to run it, execute some jobs, take a look how it happens. Maybe report some issues if you find some or better, maybe even provide some pull requests that's completely open source, host it on GitHub, and we will be happy to see you together with us developing that. That was Alex Volochnev, developer advocate for Datastax, and we are happy to see you interested in Cascade Sandra. See you next time.